Welcome back to Soviet Space Program, a KSP RP-1 career playthrough on moderate difficulty. It is the year 1952 and we will attempt to launch the first R-1 downrange rocket. Reviewing the programs in the administration building, we can see that early rocket development now has two of the four objectives completed, leaving the 3,000 and 5,000 kilometer downrange objectives. There's a little more than three and a half years remaining before the funding peaks and then drops off dramatically, so we still have some time. For the suborbital research program, we only have one objective completed with two and a half years remaining before the funding drops off. This program will be the focus of 1952. It's almost halfway through the year by the time we have our first launch on the 7th of June. Carrying 35 units of sounding payload and the biological experiment, this launch is one of the four objectives for the suborbital research program. With a tight budget, funding has been prioritized to building and staffing the R1 complex, and it wasn't until early tracking was researched where 10 engineers pulled from the R1 LC to build the low space bio capsule sounding rocket. Back at the Space Center, the engineers are shifted back to LC2, and auto hire is reconfigured again to max the LC with 77 staff. Then into R&D to research early material science, which will unlock aluminum stringer tanks and further efficiency of the engineers. Finally, 11 months after the completion of the R1 launch complex, the first R1 rocket takes flight on the 25th of October. With avionics on board, these R1s will be flown manually using MechJeb Smart ASS. After reaching a speed of 30 meters per second, I change the pitch to 80 degrees. Then I continue turning over in 5 degree increments, following the prograde marker until I reach a final pitch of 50. A few seconds before burnout, I input some roll to give some spin stabilization. A drawback of this design is the film capsule is shrouded until decoupled, meaning no science will be gathered until it is staged. This design choice was purely for aesthetics. You can easily build the rocket thinner to match the diameter of the film camera. The R1 trajectory peaks at 190 kilometers altitude, so it is able to gather a little over three minutes of science from low space. On re-entry, the film capsule with the avionics pulls 12 Gs and then comes down to the ground like a spinning top. With some low Earth orbit science transmitted and planetary photography recovered, avionics prototypes and basic rocketry is added to the research queue. Then we time warp to the next launch. November is the final launch of the year, being a 130 kilometer altitude contract, requiring 75 units of sounding payload. In order to hit the requirement with the current tech, the parachute was removed, the fins were trimmed down from four to three, and the tank was stretched to overburn the U-1250 by six and a half seconds. This design is unable to get over 140 kilometers, so these launches going forward are only for farming confidence. The plan with these altitude contracts is to launch only when the cooldown timer is over 90 days to get a larger return of confidence per launch. 1952 is a bit of a short one, but soon LC2 will be fully staffed and things are about to get busy. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one.